What's up, Flesh and Blood family? This is Preston with The King's Table. Wanted to do a quick and fun video talking about Kasai in Skirmish Season 8 and uh, go over uh, my deck that won our local Skirmish and talk about some choices that I made in the deck uh, preparing for our particular local meta. And hopefully uh, this inspires you to try some new things in Kasai. And uh, yeah, I just want to talk about the, the deck, how it performed, and uh, hopefully give you something to... Uh, to use in this season since it just recently kicked off and we have a few more weeks to go. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's get into it. Now, I'm not going to uh, read every single card here. Hopefully you're at least a little familiar with Kasai as we get into this, but um, Kasai is one of my absolute favorite warriors to play. Uh, I think I've said on the channel a couple times before, but when I first started playing Flesh and Blood, uh, I was not a fan of the warrior playstyle, and Kasai was sort of the first one to, to win me over, and um, now I think I own more cards and legendaries for uh, the warrior class than anything else. Uh, I yeah, I don't think there's any other class that I own um, as much stuff for. So, um, yeah, I, I love playing Warrior Class now, and I'm really excited for Heavy Hitters and what it's going to bring us with new Kasai. But um, let's go ahead and let's take a look at uh, some of the things that uh, I've included in my Centauri Sword deck. So, uh, for equipment, I wanted to keep it nice and simple um, because I wanted some sideboarding options in the deck. Uh, so, just running the Centauri Sabers, um, Courage of Bladehold, and Crown of Providence. Uh, those are, um, you know, pretty staple along with Valiant Dynamo. Uh, I ran Refraction Bolters for a long time, uh, but uh, I finally decided to pick up some Valiant Dynamos, and I'm a huge fan of them in Kasai, and it's, if you can... Um, I would recommend running them. Uh, obviously, if you want to try and make a budget or more approachable version version of this deck, then uh, certainly just swapping in the Refraction Boulders would be fine. And then Iron Song versus, I know that there's uh, maybe some debate. I don't know, but um, you know, Refraction Bolt, not Refraction Bolters, uh, Brave Forge Bracers is certainly an option that you could take instead of the Iron Song versus. Um, I'm going to be totally honest with you. Uh, when I was thinking about this deck for uh, this event, uh, I knew that I wanted the Iron Song versus playmat. I didn't care about any other prizing, uh, whatever. That wasn't important to me. Uh, just the playmat. I was really excited and I absolutely wanted. And I knew that nothing was going to stop me from getting it. So um, I thought it would be really fun to specifically run Iron Song versus uh, just to win uh, with the card that was on the playmat. Uh, yes, that sounds absolutely ridiculous and silly, but that's okay because that's what we do around here. We do ridiculous and silly sometimes. So, um, run Brave Forge Bracers if you want, run Iron Song Versus if you want. Um, realistically speaking though, sometimes I do like Iron Song Versus more, um, just to be able to, uh, attempt to create the Courage token. Um, and I feel like I have, um, a little more flexibility on when I can, you know, make that Courage token pop and get that plus one. Um, but I mean, ultimately, you know, pick whichever one that you prefer. Um, I've heard good arguments for both of them. So whichever, and then running no room boots, gloves and hood for your, um, you know, for your Kano matchups, for your, uh, Dromai matchups, uh, for Kano running all three, uh, for Dromai, um, I could probably see running the, uh, the boots and the hood. I mean, ultimately, um, it depends on if you are like, if you're going to an event, um, you know, with some locals and you have an idea of what some of your, uh, friends and play group run in their dromas, then, um, you know, you can sort of, uh, tech appropriately. But, um, I had some other tech that I put in the deck for, uh, my dromai matchups. And uh, I feel like it would have gone well if I would have drawn the cards. It was just an unfortunate game for me. That was my only loss of the day was against a Dromai. And that was because I didn't draw any of my poppers, which we'll talk about in a moment. But um, this is the equipment that I prefer. Uh, this is uh, just what I've, I've enjoyed running the most in Kasai. Now, as far as the deck, you'll probably see that there's a lot of things in here that are, um, you know, generally included in Kasai lists. Um, so I'm not going to talk about everything, you know, like the spoils of war and blood on her hands. I mean, those are, um, you know, Blade Runner, obviously for the go again and what it sets up for your second Centauri Saber. Uh, so a lot of those, um, we don't need to spend a ton of time talking on, but I want to talk about a couple of key differences, um, or at least key cards for me, um, that have sort of led to my performance with this deck. And I'll be honest, um, I feel like the way that I've played Kasai in the past has always felt pretty consistent, 
um, and, you know, pretty brutal for my opponents, but um, this iteration of the deck is the most consistent it has ever been uh, for me. And uh, again, for me and the way that I play Kasai, that this is something that might not work for some warrior players. Um, this is this is just the way that I prefer to play this deck. And so for me, um, this is the most consistent it's ever been for me. And this is also the most absolute savage that it's ever been. Um, I think uh, I think the lowest my life total ever got was in the final match, and that was against a five player. And I think he got me down to eight, if I remember correctly. But um, I'll have to pull up my life pad and confirm. So if anyone's watching this, it was the event, uh, and I was lower than that. I apologize if I forgot. Then I'll issue a public statement later. I don't know. Anyway, um, so point is, uh, this is the most consistent, most savage um, this deck has ever felt uh, in the way that I like to play it. So um, I want to talk about a couple of things that are. Um, that are cards that I've included that I really enjoy in this deck. And I, if you haven't tried them before, um, I definitely recommend. Um, but before I do that, I want to mention, I have this interesting relationship with blood on our hands. I'm, I always am going to put it in, uh, the, you know, this iteration of Kasai because it's, it's an incredible card. And when it works, it absolutely works. Uh, but I have won more games on Kasai with route uh, and with push forward, specifically push forward, than I have with uh, with blood on her hands. So um, I know that that's just an anecdote. I know that's just my personal experience. Um, I just always find that pretty funny. Um, push forward is an absolute rock star of a card. I love this card. If this is ever a judge pack cold foil, uh, then my wallet's going to hurt because I'm going to absolutely need this in cold foil. Um, I love this card. So traditionally in a lot of Kasai lists that I see when I'm just browsing on February, um, I don't see a lot of push forwards. Um, maybe I'll see like one route and one push forward. Um, but, but generally, um, I don't, I don't see a lot of two ofs of push forward. And, uh, that's a card that I absolutely love. And so, um, I, I don't I don't necessarily think I've built the deck around that card, but um, that's a card for me that I've put a lot of time into sort of testing and understanding the play lines for, and so I really I really enjoy it. A couple other um, uh, running the two copies of Route, depending on the matchup, I might take one of them out, um, but it, it certainly uh, it certainly happened in a number of games where I've been able to play both copies of the Route, and so um, I like to run two because I think it's a you know, it's a pretty savage card and it always feels good to, to get off. But, um, I, you know, I run, I run two copies of that card. And then, um, some of the things that I, I had changed as I was approaching this skirmish season, um, before I was also running, uh, two blues of outland skirmish. And I decided to go ahead and cut that, um, because I see a lot of Kasai lists running multiple copies of hit and run, whether it's reds and blues, reds, yellows, and blues, um, I see hit and run often included. Um, I testing with this card in the past, running more than just blues. I haven't really enjoyed, and it hasn't really played well into the way that I play this deck. Um, so I decided in testing for the skirmish season, um, I decided to actually put in the two blue hit and runs instead of the blue outland skirmish, um, and it actually served me quite well. It kept my ratios pretty tight with the um, you know with my blues. Uh, but it also just gave me an additional go again option um, that was because I, I I always prefer and I would imagine that most warrior players might say this, but whenever you can get the guaranteed go again, uh, you know, that's that's the kind of card you want to be including in your deck list. So um, it, wherever I can, I got to get that uh, that guaranteed go again, um, especially since I'm running the Valiant Dynamos and not the uh, Refraction Bolters. Um, it doesn't hurt to have another way for the guaranteed go again. And then because our local meta is, um, you know, at least for us, we have a lot of uh, Brute players and um, we have a lot of like Dromai Prism, that sort of thing. So uh, I was trying to figure out a way with the limited card pool to keep all of my favorite cards that are sort of the core of what I want to do with this deck. I was trying to understand and trying to figure out what do I do to tech against some of those sorts of things. And um, I always run one Nourishing Emptiness. Uh, it is an absolute powerhouse of a card in this deck. 
when you can go in, um, especially if you have the opportunity to, uh, you know, get a card into Arsenal. If you get a card into Arsenal, a five card hand with a warrior, it's it's so much fun. Uh, some of the shenanigans you can pull off. And so I wanted to for the uh, for the Dromai matchup um, and for some of the more like you know heraldy aggressive prisms. Um, I went ahead and I'll typically tech in uh, another Nourishing Emptiness. This is more for the popper than it is for the actual ability of the card. Um, and then two Command and Conquers. Uh, and that's sort of the, you know, the, the tech that I put in for that. I, I didn't get to test it to its fullest extent. Because like I said, the only time I actually played a Dromai on Saturday, um, I didn't draw a single popper. And uh, it, the, the game went accordingly. Like I said, it was my only loss. So... Um, but for the, the matchups, um, things like, uh, you know, Brute, um, we don't have a ton of Guardian players locally. We just have a lot of people, uh, on like Brute or we've got a couple of Azalea players. And so if I need to, if I only get an opportunity to block with one thing or to, um, you know, have one defense reaction, uh, sure. I'm running a couple sync blows, but the steel blade shunt is in there as well. Um, I've often, you know, if you're if you're playing against a hero that is very weapon centric, um, you know, I've won a couple games here and there, We're just throwing, getting them down to one, and then blocking out their weapon with a steel blade shunt, um, and so that's why that's in there. This is a very versatile card, um, whether it's just, you know, just defending, doing what it's supposed to do, or whether it's also, uh, you know, winning a game or or chipping away at some life, then um, steel blade shunt has a lot of uh, versatility in the deck. So. Um, yeah, for me, uh, like I said, I the changes that I made with the the hit and run, uh, throwing in, uh, making sure I had two copies of push forward. Uh, also, um, a lot of our local players are are playing with heroes that have the ability uh, to bring equipment with some decent block value. Um, so I also threw in the puncture for uh, this iteration of the deck. So between that and my changes with um, the command and conquer and the nourishing emptiness for some of those other matchups. Um, like I said, I, I feel like this is the the best the deck has ever performed for me. Um, I was I was able to win the skirmish with only one loss. Um, I, if I remember correctly, so I was able to take down uh, I was able to take down a Kano, a um, a Kano, a Rhinar, two Rhinars, a Phi, and um, I feel like I'm missing one. No, I'm not missing one. Yeah, so uh, those were the those were the matches that I won. And sometimes it feels like Reinar, depending on how they roll their dice, um, it can be a really uh, tough matchup because you know the the equipment fridge is pretty strong. But once they get through it, um, especially in Blitz with that twenty life total, um, it can be really easy to uh, see the end of the match quite quickly. So. Um, yeah, I hope this was of some help. Um, I know it was just a lot of rambling about one of my favorite heroes, but, um, I just wanted to provide a deck list, uh, talk about, uh, some of my options and why I enjoy them. And, uh, I hope that this is something that is helpful for, uh, those of you that are considering Kasai, or maybe you've built a Kasai, but something feels off about the deck list or, um, wherever you might be. I hope that this is helpful in this upcoming skirmish season, and I hope that you have as much success with this deck as I have. So um, if you do, if you have uh, you know any good stories to tell, if you take a deck like this to a skirmish, um, I'd love to hear how you did. I'd love to hear how that goes. So definitely comment below, hit us up on Twitter, anything like that. Um, but thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.